You know, the way I look at it, much of life is spent absorbed in two you know, driving opposite forces. You know, on one hand, it's about generating creative ideas. On the other hand, it's about finding solutions to problems. You know, ideas, solutions, solutions, ideas. Now, I discovered someone who has devised a recipe for it and definitely worth learning about. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor over at bloomerboomer.com. It's a lifestyle publication for the uh, 50 plus community now approaching our 10 year anniversary, okay? Now something that has always fascinated me is the study of creativity. So when I, I heard about Dr. Roger Firestein, I was excited to talk with him. Roger is with the Center for Creativity and Change Leadership at the State University of New York in Buffalo and teaches a proven method for deliberate creativity, the creative problem solving process that he calls CPS. Now, he is author of the book, uh, Create in a, a Flash, a, Le a Leader's Recipe for a Break through innovation. But first, I want to tell you about our shows because, well, they are different. You know, we have a variety of interesting guests with a slightly quirky format that you might see in my background here, a virtual video game I'm mastering, all to provide a powerful, passive learning experience that I hope you enjoy. Now, recently, I have been playing Journey, which is about exploring an ancient and mysterious world as I soar above ruins and glide across sands to discover its secrets. It features stunning visuals and a Grammy-nominated musical score. There is a lot to unpack, so uh, let's get right to it. And remember, I love marmalade. Well, Roger, Roger Firestein, I am really, really excited to talk to you and about your book, uh, Create in a Flash, a Leader's Recipe for Breakthrough uh, Innovation. Um, Thank you, Andy. Glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. First, I want to hear what you're doing uh, to survive the pandemic. Now, this might be actually a good time uh, to talk about the lovely blog that you wrote about your mom. <laughs> Andy, you are wonderful. You just got on it this morning. The blog came out this morning, and the blog is called "What Do You Do? What Do You Do When You're 89 Years Old and You're in the, in, you're in the Middle of a Pandemic?" And so, what to do when you're 89 years old and you're in the middle of a pandemic? Get creative. And uh, my mother has been an inspiration for creativity for me and for my family. Um, she was been a church organist for years. She's played for over 100 weddings and funerals. She quilts like crazy. She has a body of work of about 200 quilts. Um, and so I was out visiting her for her 89th birthday, uh, just before we closed down. And uh, as I came back and, and I began to talk to her, I said, well, what are you doing during this pandemic? And she said, well, I'm making masks. And so um, what she did was she she uh, raided her stash. Now, that's a quilter's word uh, for of all the quilt scraps that she had. And she has made masks from people that are all over the country now. She sent them all the way to New York, to California. I have one of, uh, of a Grant John Deere tractor pattern. Um, but it's, it's that sort of thing as far as creativity is concerned, is that what she's doing is that she's constantly coming up with new ideas and making those things happen. And her, she said her secret to creativity and a long life is to get off your butt and do something. <laughs> well, the so, reason I, I had to ask yes. you about it, I, I thought in many ways uh, that pretty much um, identifies a, a good way to approach what we have very little control over. Andy, I'm so glad you said that. And, and oftentimes this kind of leads us into definitions of creativity. And when I talk to people and they ask me what I do and I say, well, I teach creativity at a university or I'm a creativity consultant with corporations, the answer, and I'm sure you can peg this, is I'm not creative. Well, what people uh, uh, compare themselves to are the great creators like Einstein and, and, and Curie and Michelangelo. Well, that's what we call the big C creativity, but there's other types of creativity. And this is a model developed by Baghetto and Kaufman, two researchers. They also talk about little c creativity, and that's the kind of creativity that we see that's going on right now with drive-by birthday parties, 89-year-olds uh, making uh, 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 masks out of, out of scraps of, of materials, 
finding a new way to have what the leftovers in your refrigerator create a delicious meal. Uh, if you're a farmer, and I have a great affinity for farmers because I grew up on a farm, fixing a tractor with just wire and duct tape. And that is extraordinarily creative. And what we, what I think is really, really happening now is people are realizing that they are creative and they create in different and valuable ways. And I believe one of the big positives that we're going to get out of this experience is that people are going to realize like, hey, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, I mean, you know, people are recording uh, 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 night, like late night shows via distance like this. It's extraordinary what's going on that way. And it is really affirming that, yes, that's what makes us human. We're creative and we create in different and valuable ways. Yeah, that's a great way to explain it. And let me tell you that I have been totally absorbed in the uh, creative process all my life. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's why I'm excited beyond belief to talk with someone who has studied it and become mm -hmm. immersed in it. It feels uh, antithetical, though, to ask you this question, but can you define the creative process? Well, I certainly can. And let's first start with maybe a definition of creativity. And I use the definition of creativity that the creativity researcher Morris Stein uses. Creativity is something that's novel and useful. And that spends a broad definition. And so that's a definition to begin from. But the creative process essentially follows about four basic steps. First, clarify the problem. What is it the problem that you what's the problem that you really want to work on? Generate ideas for solving that problem develop those ideas, and then put together a, an action plan. So uh, clarify the problem, generate ideas, develop solutions, plan for action. Now within that, what we have is we have some different types of thinking going on. We have divergent thinking. We come up with lots of different creative questions to define the problem. And then convergent thinking to select those questions. And oftentimes what we begin to do is we, we oftentimes set out solving the wrong problem and that's why we wonder why the ideas that we come up with aren't the ideas that we're looking for. So I recommend to folks is like, just as you generate lots of ideas for solving a challenge or a problem, come up with lots of different creative questions. And we talk about those in Create in the Flash. And those questions begin with like, how to, or how might we? So once you've stored up a bunch of creative questions, pick the best of those creative questions, then generate a bunch of ideas. And we can talk more about that if you'd like, Andy. Select the best of those ideas, refine those ideas, looking at the strengths of the ideas first, and then overcoming concerns, generate all the possible action steps you might take to, to put that idea into action, select the best actions, and then start to work. So and so I, that's, the, yeah, go ahead. So yeah. I have a family member mm -hmm. uh, who tells me that uh, they don't have a creative bone, bone in, their in their body. body. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've heard of it, yeah. Now I yes, wonder sir. to myself, is that really possible? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Flat out, no, because that's the thing that we talked about earlier, Andy. They're, they're defining themselves. They're putting themselves up against these great creators. But I bet if you ask that person, one, what is it they like to do? And then you're going to find that they're probably modifying those things. And so oftentimes, you know, you'll say, well, I'm not a musician or I'm not an artist. So I'm not creative. That's not the case at all. I mean, you could be creative gardening. And back to my mother, here she is. She's making masks, you know. So, you know, in every aspect of life, people exhibit some types of creativity because one, it's fun and that's what makes us human. And so I, I guess what I'd, what I'd do is I'd kind of take a look at your family member and kind of watch them and see them when they're doing some creative stuff. And maybe what they're doing is doing some uh, creative things in the kitchen um, or maybe they're doing some creative things in the garden or the shop or something along those lines. You'll find it and then you'll point it out to them and they say, oh, that's not creative. Well, it certainly is. It's that little C type of creativity we talked about. Yeah, and even at the work they do, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you know, for so long, um, creativity has always, in my mind, been linked to the arts. You know, it seems mm -hmm. only recently, more like maybe the last 20 years or so, you know, that creativity is being appreciated and encouraged in business and organizations. Um, are you seeing it that way? And here's the thing that I'm seeing, and I'm so delightful, to, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, I have, uh, let me tell you a quick story about this. I fly on airplanes a lot, or at least I used to. And so you get on the airplane, you sit down, you know how the conversation goes. And the uh, person next to you says, and I've tried this out, it's really fun. The person next to me said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a creativity consultant. And they go, what, basket weaving? I'm not creative, I'm not an artist. And the conversation usually kind of stops there. Same scenario, what do you do? 
I'm an innovation consultant. And then their eyes light up. They go, innovation, innovation, that's wonderful. We have innovation in our corporate culture. You know, it's, it's what we do. Innovation is so important. And so we, we've realized that innovation is so important. And I think innovation is something that's, that, 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 that folks in business are more comfortable with. Now, here's the thing that I'm finding that I think is really, really beautiful. If you look at a lot of the commercials that are coming out today during this pandemic, people are saying, we have to use our creativity. We have to do some creative problem solving around this. Innovation, that word is not entering into it, but the word creativity is now really bubbling up to the surface. And, and that's the thing that people are doing, you know, drive by birthday parties, all those sorts of things. That's really creative. And so, and it's also very innovative. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm standing on creativity and innovation. Well, you've already, you know, I have something else in my mind that mm -hmm. uh, you've kind of, you know, already answered, but I'm wondering if you've ever thought about equating creativity with maybe a high risk tolerance or putting it another way, creativity is maybe riskier? Well, let's talk about creativity and high risk tolerance. Here's one of the things that we find. And oftentimes we'll talk to, I'll work, I work with entrepreneurs they're oftentimes incredibly creative. And so w folks will say to them, you know, that's a really risky situation that you're going to do there. Or have you, have you looked at your risk in that? And they said, yes, I've looked at my risk. And by the way, if this doesn't work, then this will work. And if that doesn't work, then this will work and this will work and this will work. And so one of the things that we find with creativity, it essentially reduces the risk because what creativity does, and particularly thinking divergently, as we talked about before, is it gives us so many more options that we hadn't considered. Well, if you have one or two options and you're in a tough situation, that's all you've got. But if you've got 10, 15, 20, 30, your risk level and your stress level is gonna go down completely, I mean, significantly, because you can do this one or this one or this one. You've already thought it out. You've written it down, it's stored out, up, and it's ready to go. So the whole creative process is designed to, to reduce risk, and it actually it does, because people will start out working on challenges or goals or wishes that they think are really, really huge, uh, or even some cases risky. By the time they go through the process, they go, this is simple. And it's so boiled down to just the first little incremental step to move them toward that goal. So, you know, what I hear you saying, uh, which makes a lot of sense to me, is mm -hmm. it gives you choices that maybe you yes. didn't realize. Yeah, and we like to use the phrase that, that stress is a perceived lack of options and emphasis there on the word perceived. And if we follow the guidelines for generating lots of ideas, don't judge your ideas, uh, you know, come up with wild unusual ideas, make connections, that comes gives you a lot more options and as a result, it reduces stress. Because I'm sure, Andy, you've been in stressful situations. You wake up at three o'clock in the morning and the same one or two or three ideas come across your head for trying to solve it. Well, it, what, let's come up with more than one or two. Um, let's come up with multiple ideas so that one, you don't get so invested in one idea. And the other thing is so that you can go through and say, look, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna do this one, this one, this one, this one. It significantly reduces the stress level. Yeah, now, you know, for our community here of people over mm -hmm. 50, you know, in some ways, our challenges are, are the same, you know, as everyone else. Yes. But in other ways, they're, they're unique. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to us how, you know, creative thinking, you know, fits into that. Yeah, well, um, I'm going to be 65 this year. How do I look? Um, um, you look great. Thank you. My students say the same thing. They say, you don't look 65 and you certainly don't act 65. Right? <laughs> which, is, which is great, too. Which is great, too. I'm having just too much fun. Um, what was the question again? Anyway, how well, does that apply to us as being over yeah, 50? Yeah, there you go. That's right. Uh -huh. I mean, well, because I, we do, we, we're the same as everyone else. Yeah. We're the same as a 20-year-old as we are from anyone. But on the other hand, there are certain things unique about us, uh, about mm -hmm. our needs and what we're looking for in life or what have you. So I'm just trying to get at, uh, you know, how that creative process uh, might help us uh, embellish and make more of our life. Whatever well, it might be. Yeah, and I was thinking about our, our conversation today. And part of the whole, part of the, there's one creative process that we've talked about, but the other creative process is really kind of establishing a vision for what you want to create, what you want to make happen in your life. And, and, and I do sessions on personal visioning and then using creative problem solving to help to people to create their future. 
Um, and so I think one of the things that's really, really important as we get into our 50s, our mid 50s, our 60s, our mid 60s, is to have some kind of compelling vision of the future that we still want to go after. What else do we want to create? What else do we want to make happen? And it's been very interesting personally since the books come out, people are saying, well, what's your next big project? And it's interesting. I don't have a next big project, but I'm looking wider now. Instead of looking more, more, more uh, a, tra a trajectory upward, it's a wider look now. So what do I want to create overall in my life to make that tapestry even richer? And I think of folks of a, that are over 50, you know, we've established in our careers, uh, we're in the latter part of life. Creativity is one of the things that absolutely enriches all of us. The other thing that we find is that um, as we age, we tend to have more time on our hands. Well, creativity is wonderful. Time is wonderful for creativity because it gives us time to explore all those things, all those new things we've been trying out. You know, back to mom again, and thank you so much for referencing that at the beginning of the interview. She's got a lot of time. And so, you know, she's got, I got to make these masks. And so she's making masks. And if she's not making masks, she's making pillows. If she's not making pillows, she's making potholders. And Andy, can I send you a few pillows or potholders? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always in the winter time need my potholders. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get you. She's got yeah. this great one that's put okay. around a bowl. I'll, yeah. Give me your address. I'll send it to you. Did answer, that answer the question for you? Yeah, it does. It does. And, you know, I, uh, I something that has kind of gone through my mind sometimes is I thought of maybe creativity where at the most unlikely moment something springs to your mind and so there it is. You know, in a way that's true, I think. But I think you can probably embellish that a little bit. Well, that's the early creative process, and that's the process that was studied by Graham Wallace very early on in the 20th century, and it composed of four steps, preparation, incubation, incubation, illumination, and verification. And it goes essentially like this. You work on a challenge, you work on a problem, you become steeped in all the data of it, but you don't make any headway. You put the problem aside, your subconscious works on it in some way, you're out in the world, you see something that somehow connects to that, or the idea bubbles forth, hence step two, yeah, illumination. And then, third step two, step three, illumination. And then the fourth step, you go about verifying what you've had in that insight. So first, the, the, uh, first the preparation, then the incubation, then inspiration, and then illumination. Now, that's great if you've got a lot of time, all right? Because that's not a predictable process. It can take from weeks to months to years, right? But, and so that's why we focus on deliberate creativity, helping you do, to deliberately generate lots of ideas, how we do to, to build on those ideas, to deliberately make connections. Um, but the other process, the whole process of preparation, inspiration, illumination, uh, verification, preparation, um, preparation, incubation, illumination, verification, not that for years in mind, well, I'm forgetting that, um, is a viable process as well, because I use that when I'm working on projects like writing. I'll get to a point where I'm stymied. I stand up, I walk away, get a cup of coffee, walk outside a little bit, come back, and there's the next sentence that comes to you. So that's the other creative process. Yeah, and you also uh, refer to learning a repeatable technique that mm -hmm. uh, has been used by organizations large and small to solve seemingly you know, intractable problems. Yes. I guess uh, I don't see the simplicity to that, but, uh, but you, you actually have figured out a simple approach to it. Well, as a matter of fact, we have, but I, we've, I've built on the work of uh, the great advertising executive Alex Osborne, the O in BBD and O. He wrote the classic book called Applied Imagination, where he outlined brainstorming, and he used it in BBDNO. But brainstorming wasn't enough. There's also a process that really needs to be developed around that. He developed that process. Over the last 40 years, I've had the great opportunity to work with great people. We've refined that process and refined it and refined it. And it works, and it follows a natural pattern of thought. First, figure out what, what the problem is, get some ideas for solving it, make those ideas better, put them into action. We do it all the time, but what this does is it makes it explicit and we're really able to drill down deeply and come up with not just one or two or three options, but 20 or 30 or 40 options. Yeah, well, Roger, um, what would you like people to take away from today's show? 
My goodness, Andy, I, I guess the main thing that I'd like people to take away from today's show is the realization that we're all creative and we create in different and valuable ways. Some of us prefer to come up with ideas that are totally outside of the box, and that's often hailed as the great breakthroughs and great creativity. But others of us want to create more incremental improvement, making a system or a process or a method or a procedure safer, more efficient, more effective. That's creative as well. So the bottom line, we're all creative. We all create in different ways. And creativity is what makes it human. Creativity is what helps us to reduce stress. And creativity, that little c creativity that we do every day, is what's going to make us through this, uh, help us get through this very, very challenging time. Yeah, you know what I've really gotten out of this discussion with you is that creativity uh, is, is not some loose, undefinable no. sense. It can be controlled and developed and learned, and, and, and that's really a good lesson to, uh, to hear. And there's a discipline around creativity, and, and one of it is making connections. And the more you do this, the more you practice generating lots of ideas or making new connections or new ideas, the better you get at it. So you can become, I guess the other thing I'd like to leave with folks is that you can deliberately enhance your creativity. And in Create in a Flash, we talk about the time-tested tools that I've used over the last 40 years to help people to deliberately increase their creativity in all settings. How can uh, people learn more about you? Well, you can go to the website, rogerfirestein.com, F-I-R-E-S-T-I-E-N.com, or you can pick up Create in a Flash, which is createinaflashbook.com. Create in a Flash is also available on Amazon and through Barnes & Noble. Yes, all right, and uh, we will have a link uh, here, and uh, so you can also find it here, and this is, here it is right here. And uh, before we go, just a few words about uh, my video game today. Uh, and I, but I first want to, Roger, I first want to thank you. And my I want to thank you so much for being here. And uh, it was fascinating. I learned a lot. Andy, I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the conversation. And uh, the book again uh, is Roger Firestein. It's uh, the author of the book Create in a Flash, a leader's... Uh, a leader's recipe for breakthrough innovation. And uh, you can watch the replay on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, here at Bloomer Boomer. And I hope you enjoyed the game. You know, this is a fascinating game. Journey is so cool. It uh, is an experience that is really indescribable. Uh, and if you want to uh, try it, let your mind wander, enjoy some beautiful music, uh, you know, I would check it out. And uh, Thank you for watching today, and so long, and uh, I love marmalade. <laughs> All right, good enough. Just hold on there one moment. I think everything uh, looks fine, and uh, that was good information, I think. Uh, oh, Andy, this was just an absolute delight talking with you.